Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Faraday Academy. Today I'm going to show you how to create and host your own portfolio quickly. I know there are a lot of other great videos that give you tips on portfolio best practices and what you should include in your portfolio. So I'm not going to dive too in depth on that. I just want to show you an easy way to get your portfolio hosted, make it look pretty good so you can get on with your learning or whatever else you're doing. I do want to note that the reason why I'm recording this is because I've gotten a lot of people who have emailed me asking me to review their portfolios and a lot of them frankly don't look that good. I know if you're a programmer, you might not have an eye for design and that's totally fine and that's why you should use a boilerplate or some kind of template that someone has already created to start your portfolio with so that way it looks good and you don't have to make really any design decisions on your own. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use this portfolio that I have here. Basically has all of the different sections you would expect in a one page portfolio. So about me, skills, projects, and then it goes to experience, education, and then a get in touch form at the end. Now I will say that I did fork this repository or this portfolio from someone else named Ryan Fitzgerald. His original one looked a little bit different and I did rearrange it slightly. He had experience and then education here at the top and I put skills and then projects, for example. I made these decisions based off of what is better. If you are a relatively new developer or career changing, then you won't have as much experience. So it's always better to put your projects near the top because this really is your experience in coding for right now. So I do assume that you know some basic HTML and you have hopefully seen or heard of GitHub and a terminal before. I am going to walk through this step by step as much as I can. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So before you do anything, you're going to want to fork this from me. So click on the fork button here. I've already done this. So you can see it's under my name, but it's forked from this original one. So once you fork this, then you're going to see your name here slash dev portfolio. And then you want to come here to clone or download and copy this link here. I don't know why it doesn't highlight when I do this, but it does copy it. If you don't have a GitHub yet, then you should absolutely stop this video and go set that up first. So I copied the link and now I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to paste it here. So git clone the link. Now it's cloning into a folder named dev portfolio. So let me go into that folder. Okay, one thing you're going to notice here is that you're on the master branch, which if you do git branch, that's the only one you have. Now to host this live for GitHub, I'm not going to overcomplicate this for you. So if you create a new branch called GH Pages, then you will be able to host it live for free directly from this when you push it back up to the GitHub website. So I recommend you do all of your changes on this GitHub or GH Pages branch. And I'm going to show you how the hosting works in a second. So now I'm going to look at this project in VS Code. I have a little shortcut here, so I'm just going to do code and then it pulls up the project. So right away you can see this is a pretty basic project. Most of what you'll be changing is in the index.html file. There's not a lot of complexity here. You're using plain JavaScript and CSS that you're importing into this index.html file. I do want to point out how this project is built because you'll notice that it uses SAS, which is a styling language that compiles down to CSS. And if you look at it, it pretty much looks like CSS with some extra features like variables and these mix-ins, which are kind of like functions in a regular programming language. Of course, the browser can't read SCSS or SAS, so there's a build system that's already set up for you to translate it so the browser can read it. So Gulp is a JavaScript task runner. It's pretty powerful. You can see there's two main tasks that it runs here. So first of all, it takes the JavaScript. So this is the regular JavaScript file you might be writing in. If you notice the scroll behavior here and some other animations and stuff are handled by JavaScript. 
but this is the human readable form. It compiles this down into a minimized format so that it's faster to load in the browser. And that all happens in gulp. It takes this original scripts file and compiles it into the .min.js file. And then it does something similar for SAS. So it takes these styles and then it processes them into CSS. It compresses them again so it loads faster in the browser and then it turns it into a CSS file in the CSS directory here. So styles.css. So you'll never actually update this file directly, nor would you want to if you look at this. This is just for the computer to read and it's minimized as much as possible. So that's what Gulp is doing. You won't actually be running either of these commands. When you start working on your resume, you're going to run this watch command, which basically watches for changes in the JavaScript file here or in this styles.scss file. And if it sees changes, for example, if you update the JavaScript, then it's going to rerun this script, recompile it into scripts.min.js, which is then imported into the HTML file. So that's the gist of it. One thing I want to point out before you start updating the code here is that this license file has to stay with the project. It is MIT licensed, so you can use it for whatever purpose you want. But as long as you are building off of this project, you should keep the license file here. Now, when you go to update it in the index.html file, you will notice that the sections are pretty well separated. So you can see the original top section with your title and the PDF download button. It's pretty easy to see where it ends, where it starts. And I really like the comment showing the end div because when you get so many nested divs here, it's hard to tell which one's which sometimes. So I think he did a really good job making this readable. So a couple things that you'll notice on this portfolio are the download resume button and then at the bottom, this contact form. So I'm going to show you how to update both of those. For download resume, when I click on it, it opens up a dialog box so I can save the resume to my local file system. And if you look in the code, you can see that this is an anchor tag. So it's a link that references this PDF file. So you can see this is the local file, which is actually right here in my root directory. So it's linking to that file. And then I'm giving it this download instruction, which is actually going to be the name of the downloaded file for whoever downloads it. So all you really have to do is delete this file, put your own PDF here, call it whatever you want, update this name, and then you can give it the same or a different name if you want for the person downloading the file. I recommend having your name in the resume name. So for example, Gwen Faraday dash resume so that when the recruiter or whoever downloaded your resume is searching for it later, they can easily find it. Now for the contact section at the end, this is actually a cool web app called Formsfree. I'm going to show you how this works real quick. So Formsfree will let you put a form like this in your website, just a regular HTML form and give you a URL to post the form information to, then Forms Free processes that and will send you an email at whatever address you want. So not only is this way easier to set up, if you know anything about Forms, you know that you need to set up a backend or some PHP files or something so that you can handle these form submissions. Well, Forms Free does that for you for free, and it also handles making sure that bots aren't submitting to your form. You're not going to get lots of spam and stuff. You might still get spam, but it will probably be from humans and not bots. So all you have to do is go to plans and you can sign up. I've already signed up here, but you basically sign up and you have to confirm your email address. And then once you confirm your email address, you can create forms and it will give you this endpoint here. Now I'm going to change this before I upload the video so that nobody can spam my URL basically. And it's easy enough and free to create your own. So you take this URL and, and you just paste it here. And then all of these inputs and text areas here will submit via an HTTP request to this address. And then Forms Free will handle the submission on their backend and then send you an email with all of these fields in it.
And that's basically all you have to do to set up a form in your website. Everything else you have to do is mostly updating links and text on the resume, taking pictures of your project, and it's pretty simple from there. So once you are done updating it, or as you're going along, you can push your code up to the GH Pages branch. So here, let me see if I made any changes. I don't think I did. So I'm just gonna make a change real quick so that I can push it. I'm just gonna add an S here for no reason. And then if I go back to my terminal, I see that I modified the index.html. So here I'm going to add that file and then I will commit it with a message. Now this isn't a Git tutorial, so I don't wanna to talk too much about all of these different things, but if you just follow these steps, you can upload it. So anyways, I'll just put updated index.html here. And now I'm going to push to GH pages. Now I'm not sure why it's giving me this error because I don't think I updated anything live, but it's basically saying that I have changes in the live version that I don't have locally. So I need to pull those down first before I can push anything new. So I'm just gonna try, oops, origin, GH pages. And if you ever see that screen on your terminal, by the way, you can just type in colon Q to quit. I think that's one of the most Googled things in programming is how to exit those screens that pop up. So now I always do git status just in case. And now I'm going to push again to GH pages and now my change should be live. Okay, so now that I've pushed to this branch, GitHub knows that anything is on this Anything that is on a branch called GH Pages is meant to be live. So it just automatically packages that into a website if possible. And once you push to a GH Pages branch, you'll notice that you have GH, something called GH Pages here. You will be able to see in settings that there is a link here. So in my case, it's gwenf.github.io slash devportfolio, which is my project name. And if I go to that link, then it's my live site with my misspelling that I just uploaded. So that's a pretty easy way to host a live site. I do wanna note that there is a special case for GitHub pages, and that is where you call your repo by your username.github.io, and you can see that's the actual name of my repository. Repository name, my username.github.io. Now the reason for this is that if it's called this exact name, GitHub will by default think that you want to put your portfolio there. So it automatically creates a GitHub page for you and you don't even have to push to a GH Pages branch. You notice I don't have one here, but because I called it by this name, you can see that I have a live site that's automatically been created by GitHub for me called gwenf.github.io. So I can only have one of these. Every other project that I upload now as a GitHub page will have to have a forward slash by the project name. So that's a special case and it's probably a good idea if it's your portfolio to just name it this. And then you can even point your domain name here if you want. So if I bought, for example, this is my old portfolio, but I do own the, do the domain name gwenfaraday.com. So I used to have it pointed here, when people went to gwenfaraday.com, it would just load this GitHub pages hosted portfolio. So it's easy free hosting for me. And this worked well, probably for about three and a half or four years for me. So I'll include the portfolio, the GitHub, all the important links in the description below. If you have any questions about this project or suggestions for videos that you think I should do, or maybe some feedback for me, please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more programming tutorials and other content. Have a great week and I'll catch up with you soon.